You know how men are lost for words when they are standing in front of a beautiful woman? <laughs> right now I'm lost for words because I'm standing in front of a very large group of not only beautiful people, but also excellent talents. To, um, to know where we're going, we must remember where we come from. I first started live in America as a 12-year-old little girl, stricken with poverty, challenged by language, and lonely without my father. But I still dream. I dream to be the best student. With that dream every step of the way, with hard work and conviction, four years later, I step up to the podium in front of 2,000 people and deliver my valedictorian speech at the age of 16. But you know what? As hard as I worked during those first four years, and as good as it felt with that accomplishment, somewhere out there today, there's a 12-year-old little girl in Swaziland, in Panama, in Tanzania, in Vietnam, who was working just as hard as I did, and whose intellectual capacity is many times greater than mine. But that little girl will never stand up here, getting recognition like I do, simply because she does not have the same opportunity I did. The opportunity started with me coming to America. I would not be an American today if my father did not have the courage to let us go and seek freedom. Freedom is something we often take for granted until we risk losing it. Freedom is something that Americans, people who are born in this country, enjoy as our right of birth. But people in other countries have to fight for with their courage and often with their lives. Thank you, America, for the opportunity of freedom that nurtures me, that allows me to thrive. I would not be a proud Vietnamese engineer tonight if it were, if it were not for my father's ability to brainwash me <laughs> at the age of six with the phrase, Zilon, my little girl, you will be an engineer one day. <laughs> That statement is simple for any Amer father in America to make, but it is a grand vision for a man who raised his daughter in a country so savage by hundred years of war, so stricken by poverty, and in a country where sons' education is important, but daughters' education are often forgotten. Thank you, Papa, for the educational opportunity you worked so hard to provide me in my first 12 years of life. When I graduated from uh, University of Texas with a BSWE, I don't have a PhD degree, I'm still working on it. <laughs> with a BSWE, magna cum laude, at the age of 19, many companies came calling, but I chose Texas Instruments. Next month will mark my 25th anniversary with TI. That is a long time <laughs> for anybody. <laughs> for anybody to be in one company in one place. And it is really long by today's standard. <laughs> Staying at TI for a quarter of a century was never about necessity. It was always about a choice. TI has respected my individual differences, honored my personal preferences, and provided me with plenty of challenges. After a quarter of a century, I can still honestly say that I'm still in love with my work. I'm in love with my work not only because of the technical stimulation, the intellectual stimulation that comes with the most advanced technological uh, development, the kind of technology that impacts people's lives, but also because of the people, my TI colleagues, who I had the chance to collaborate with, debate with, disagree with, argue with. Thank you, Texas Instrument. And thank you, my TI colleagues, for the opportunity to be in love with my work. Looking back at a 25-year uh, career, there are many moments to cherish, but one in particular stood out. It was 19, 1999. I was elected TI Fellow. My husband flew from Houston to Dallas to join me at the Fellow Banquet, honoring the newly elected fellow. That was the first time ever in 17-year TI that he joined me at a function at work. <laughs> you know, standing in the room, reception crowd with flowers on my dress, flowers on his suit, 
glasses of wine in our hands, a member of TI's board of directors took the time to walk to us, approach us, and then shook my husband's hand to congratulate him for a job well done. <laughs> With a straight face, my husband said, I think you got the wrong person, <laughs> and then pointed to me. At that point, the director's face turned really red. <laughs> I gave him a beautiful smile, put my hand on his shoulder, and said, no harm done. But I do have a favor to ask in return for the mistake you just made. I need you to help me lobby and chance the title of T.I. Fellow to T.I. Babe.